An Abrams M1A2 can accelerate to 67 kilometers per hour with an attacking range of 2 kilometers. Leopard 2 tank cannon launches 120 millimeters caliber that can penetrate an enemy's armor up to 1 meter. My name is Daniel Salem and you are watching War is Algebra and today we're discussing an impressive tank. Watch this. The first thing I want to ask, do you have driving license? For a tank? Yes, in a way. They are like permits given by training centers. You have the right to be in the gunner's seat, in the commander's seat, in the driver mechanic's seat. Ukrainian main battle tank T8 for you. Manufacturer, Kharkov armored plant. Combat weight, 46 to 48 tons. Dimensions, width 3.7 meters. Height to 0.2 meters. Length with gun, 9.6 meters. Armor type, multi-layered with ceramic filler. Communication range to 20 kilometers. Range, 400 to 500 kilometers. Crew, three people. Main armament, smoothbore 125 millimeters gun. What is this? What is it called? This is a tank. A tracked vehicle with heavy armor that performs a wide range of tasks, both offensive and defensive, and so on. The T-84 tank was built as an experimental model based on the T-80 UD tank. It didn't differ much from the latter. They made some modifications to the tank commander's turret. They installed an optoelectronic suppression system. Here it is. These are emitters that suppress. The T-84 had what is called a solid turret. Starting with the T-84U, they introduced a turret using welded roll technology. It allowed the turret to be made not by casting but from sheets of armored steel, filled inside with composite armor ceramic plates and a special ultra porcelain. The T-84U tank was considered as a replacement for other main battle vehicles. They enhanced and improved a range of characteristics to align this tank with modern European tanks in Ukraine. In particular, they reinforced protection level. If you take both dynamic protection and the armor itself into account, it reaches up to 900 millimeters on the frontal projection. However, the tank doesn't have 900 millimeters everywhere. Mechanical engineering is a game of compromises. If you make it 900 millimeters everywhere, then how much engine power, mobility, and fuel do you need? That's why the armor is distributed. It's composite meaning layers of different materials are used. And this is the secret of any manufacturer. When we say, distribute it, it means it's thinner at the back than at the front. The most protected part of any tank is 45 degrees to the left and 45 degrees to the right. Beyond that it's less protected. The T84U is sometimes mistakenly referred to as the T84U oblet, but it is not in reality. The Oplet is a tank from 2009, which is named BM Oplet without any additional indexes. Let us discuss compartments. Uh, any tank is divided into two compartments, more precisely, into three compartments. That's the front, the control compartment, where the driver sits. He has the driver's shield there, controlling the engine the chassis, and so on. The driver also has the so-called non-mechanized ammunition stowage. That is, spare shells, seven pieces in total, are located to the right of the driver. They are not in the conveyor. It's a complete set of ammunition. In case the ammunition is used up in the conveyor, in the automated loading system, you simply shift the spare ones. By the way, many don't know how the transfer from non-mechanized stowage to the conveyor happens. They start pulling it out through the hatch, and so on. In reality, the designers thought of an interesting thing if you rotate the turret to the stern. You just press a button, a tray comes up, and the driver hands the shell charge into that opening. In five minutes, you reload seven shells into the conveyor, plus another seven shells, without getting out of the tank. Neither the T-72 nor the T-90 can boast of this. It's purely a feature of the loading mechanism. The automatic loading system doesn't do this. Let us move further. Second compartment, the combat compartment. Essentially, it's the turret. 
Here, in the right hatch, is the tank commander, and in the left hatch is the gunner operator. They engage in firing. By the way, a feature of the design, typically the gunner aims, but here there is a double system that allows the tank commander to take control of both the turret and the tank's armament, guiding precise fire. But the unique aspect here is that the tank commander also has a rangefinder. In other models, there is no capability for the tank commander to measure the target's range. That is, he must manually calculate the target's distance. The diesel engine of this tank is a particular source of pride for the developers. It is 20% more powerful than its predecessor, allowing the vehicle to be fast and maneuverable. Tell me about the engine. On this tank, the 6TD2 engine is installed, with a power output of 1200 horsepower. This is a further development of the engine from the T80UD tank, which had a power output of 1000 horsepower. The unique aspect of the design is that it is an opposite engine with counter-moving pistons. It's a two-stroke engine. It has the highest coefficient of so-called power-to-weight ratio, meaning small size but high output power. In this case, it develops around 21 to 22 horsepower per ton. That's quite good. It's an interesting coefficient. If it's lower, the tank's mobility is low. If it's higher, there's unnecessary fuel consumption. Regarding fuel consumption. 4.6 liters per kilometer. On average, because there are different gears and different terrains. Through trial and error, the Ministry of Defense allocates 4.6 liters per kilometer for us. If we are driving on a highway, for example, Somewhere in the 5-6-70H gear, the consumption drops to around 2.5 liters per kilometer. The unique feature is the onboard gearboxes. They are unique. They allow for four reverse gears. The reverse speed is up to 30 to 35 kilometers per hour. The armament of the T8 for you tank includes gun, 125 millimeters KBA-3, machine guns, 12.7 mm KT 12.7, 7.6 to mm KT 7.62, anti-tank guided missile ATGM, combat. Unlike some Western tanks already in the armed forces of Ukraine, the T8 for you has a smaller crew, one person less. This is related to technological features in the combat part of the tank. Crew size. On all our tanks, the crew size is three people, gunner, driver mechanic, and tank commander. The tanks we currently receive, like the Leopard, Challenger, Abrams, and even the T-55, have a crew of four. There is a loader as well. Here, the loader has been eliminated, and they installed an automated loading system that independently selects and loads the required type of projectile. Watch this. How many times has this tank been involved in battles? Or is it constantly on combat missions? No, we have a kind of rotation. So, being on the front lines, we perform tasks. Lately, of course, the main task is long-range shooting. But it has also been involved in direct engagements. One of the advantages of the Ukrainian t 8 for u model, according to tank crews, is the fire control system with a transition to digital technology. Another innovation is the presence of a thermal imaging site. In comparison, for example, with the T-72 tank, which lacks a fire control system altogether and only has a sighting complex, this tank is far superior. It has an optoelectronic suppression system. And, for instance, the complex for sensor signaling, indicating that someone has taken a range measurement on you, works absolutely reliably and has already been tested. The ranges. Shooting range? We are provided with direct fire up to 4 kilometers. If we use Russian trophy missiles, they reach up to 6 kilometers. Up to 6 kilometers? Yes. If firing from a close firing position 12 kilometers 95 meters. Naturally, there's the concept of ballistics. You can't deceive it. And the farther it goes, the lower the accuracy. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Nowadays, there are many drones flying. How well can the tank turret withstand attacks? It was quite successfully covered from above with dynamic protection, even for that time, in 1999. In principle, it withstands. But we plan to weld an anti-drone net. Watch this! After taking a journey into the world of T-84U, the aftertaste of the modernity and the high technology is impressive. My name is Daniel Salem and you were watching War is Algebra. Stay tuned.